This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Spoke them if you got them. It's episode 420 of the Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky, get awesome. And I have my sweet morning vo- voice going on because we record at a way different time. Uh, Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA on voting day. And we're recording this much earlier uh, than typical. Uh, give me a full episode here. Uh, well, we'll see how full it gets uh, today because uh, I hope you have, if you're listening to this later, went out and vote. We will shame you. You must vote. Go vote. Vote. <laughs> vote and vote often, right? Uh, but we have with us, first of all, uh, because because I don't remember how my cameras work this morning. Dutters is with us. Hi. Hey, sales and marketing director at the Scare House, which is finally over the season. Not that you're exactly done with work. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, you get all the post work, but of course, uh, you guys survived a uh, um, um, glow stick night. Yes, I didn't was... realize the entire group got one gold glow oh, stick. Oh yeah, it was so much. I, I tormented guests. It was so much fun. <laughs> it's my uh, therapy at the end of the season. Yeah, it's, it's your payback to yeah. The... The customers. Yeah. I love you customers, but some of you, whoa. Ooh. <laughs> it is nice that you do you, you do get you are in a position to be not nice on purpose to customers uh-huh. and it's okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> I get to torment you for fun. It's kinda like the people who go visit the soup Nazi. Kind yeah, of. I go there specifically yeah. intending to have rude service. Yeah, exactly. And they're okay with it, and they uh, pay for it. One of those insulting, one of those insulting restaurants, right? Yes. So she's not reading the book. She's on her iPad. It's producer Missy is on the show and <laughs> facing everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you just you pulled me from the the corner back. I did in my little. The, high we have, we need to make it special since we're not doing the normal show. So. Yeah, so you, you guys get a producer Missy not producing the show today. Mere hours from getting on a plane to California. Bye. Yep. Later. I'm leaving. Yes. On a jet plane. Yep. Absolutely. Don't know when I'll be back again. That, that's legit. She always gets a one-way ticket. I literally don't know when my wife is coming back. <laughs> so yeah. Or if. You forgot the word if. Yeah. If is <laughs> more and more. It becomes a question. Uh, but this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out at mm-hmm. awesomecast.com. Um, you can subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. If we're not on the app that you like to use, I understand uh, Brian was in uh, Brian Crawford was in the chat saying, "Hey, Google Podcasts maybe don't work that great." Uh, so let us know if you're having any trouble with that. We'll see what we can do to make sure we're on the platform that you'd like to use. Tweet us at AwesomeCast. Hit us up at AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, there, you can also hit us up if you want to, uh, if you're interested in advertising on the show, like our great partners that have been uh, doing so with us. Or if you want to be part of our studio audience here, when we're usually on at 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday, except for Election Day, unfortunately, this week. Um, but that's typically uh, uh, not interrupted until, you know, well, we, we probably move it like maybe three times a year or something like that. But uh, let us know about that. And uh, also, thank you to our streaming partners, RiversEdgePGH.com, that carry us every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And our friends on the West Coast, that Missy's getting closer to, uh, over at the 405Media.com, weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time, so you can catch up on the latest of Awesome Cast. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast, at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore, and at the Fan of the Show $1 level, uh, Michael door um but we we're talking about 90s clothing clothing on pinterest <laughs> on gold this week uh so you guys will get a little bit of extra of that at the five dollar level again you guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesome cast and uh so it is our t- awesome thing of the week and uh i, I was trying to think what, what i've been getting into this week i my awesome thing <laughs> is bugs bunny's uh crazy castle on the game boy <laughs> i have it, it, you've noticed missy probably are you stuck in the 90s again i'm stuck in the 90s again so 
so I, I I I have on my nightstand um a lot of old tech and new tech. Like it's weird because it's like Apple tra- Apple Watch charger, iPhones plugged in. I have a Nexus Seven still there because I still like because it's kind of a nicer size to read stuff. Um, and then I have like a Game Gear. <laughs> <laughs> and a Game Boy Advance and like a stack of my old uh, Game Boy cartridges. I literally have like two cartridges for the Advance. Um, and lately I've been playing uh, Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. It was kind of like a puzzly um, side-scroller game where uh, it, it, it's, it seems so shoddily done because just randomly like the other characters are like Yosemite Sam and like Sylvester and you have to like dump through doors and stuff. I've been absolutely addicted to this game lately and, um, and trying to... <laughs> This is the thing I wish I had back in the day because I can just take a picture of the code, the passcode for the levels, so it's easier for in it's in the cloud, so I don't lose my passwords, and I'm up to like at level like thirty five, I think there's a hundred or something like that. So, so but, what what you're saying is that your old games are benefited by your current technology. Yeah, well, newer tech. Yes, absolutely. Because otherwise, I remember having to write down those codes on a piece of paper. You'd have like and then a, you'd lose the piece of paper because yep. you know, like mom would throw it out or something like that, thinking it was trash, and you lost all that progress. Yep, yep. Or even worse, when you had you played like Mega Man and it was like the dot matrix thing. Oh. And you had to like write the grid out and stuff. Yes. Capcom hated you. Yes. Oh gosh. Yes. So I, you know, you know, come to realize that my entirety of my video game playing has been Pokemon Go, uh, Alto's uh, Alto's Adventure or Odyssey, actually. I will both of my time interchange and and Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle, and Doctor Mario on the on the Game Boy. (laughs) So it's yeah, all this technology, and that's what I end up playing these days. So that's my awesome thing. I I, I don't know. I, I really I, I still want to get to like an exchange or something and get like they have those little like dollar bins of old like like Game Boy games and just like grab a bunch of random stuff yes. and see what gold you can find. So so I know what you're doing while I'm gone. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Katie, what's your awesome thing of the week? I am awesoming. Uh, so I didn't. So Facebook is doing a thing. Uh, it's a small business pop up. Essentially, it's these little pop up stands for very small businesses. They're going to be in Macy's stores, uh, the market at Macy's. And I didn't know, but one's in Pittsburgh starting today. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, let's go. <laughs> let's go right now. Uh, but yeah, uh, New York City, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, Fort Lauderdale, San Antonio, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, San Francisco, and Seattle. So that's interesting that Pittsburgh is on that list and exciting. Uh, but there's different, like, I guess, online places um, that are on here. I do not recognize any of these companies, but it's okay. I will now after I see them in the pop-up thing. And they have a big massive pop-up thing in uh, New York City's like Grand Central Station where they're promoting these small businesses. And they're, it's, there's like fun little setups. Like this one's like the most liked gift of all. So they have a picture of one of the items that people like. But uh, apparently this is just to get you to buy ads on Facebook because you're like, look at how they promote small businesses. You know why? Because the revenue growth of Facebook has been, in the words of this article, massively decelerating, dropping. <laughs> Year over mm. year. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. So Facebook is moving into the analog world to get you to go into the digital world and buy ads. And they're kind of beyond the early adopters that are there looking for these kinds of things, right? And yeah. they, they need to like kind of, uh, I don't want to say pick up the scraps, I guess, mm-hmm. a little bit on this. So, um, I mean, it's needed because, I mean, it's still, you know, whatever you think of, uh, you know, I know, I know a few of us have had complaints about uh, Facebook yeah. advertising lately on our Slack. Um, but generally it still is kind of one of the better tools out there to get mm-hmm. reach people, you know, for all its flaws. Well, and I like that Facebook is realizing that there are people who aren't necessarily involved in the online world to the extent that they're doing pop-ups right. mm-hmm. to kind of introduce people to, Hey, we're online too. <laughs> this makes sense for the kind of people that uh, a couple of years ago I was, um, helping, I, I think I did a social media session uh for a group that it was like a small business inc- not incubator but they, they invite a bunch of people that were, had small businesses to help them build their own website and and you know get online basically right mm-hmm. and, and talk about how that was going to be beneficial to them like that those are the kind of people i think this needs to reach right because those mm-hmm. people just don't know they know how to run a garage yeah but they don't know how to get more people into the garage by having you know these online tools to make sure they're discoverable on on this stuff right so, you know, it's it's surprising. Like, the garage we go to seems very old school. Oh, yeah. And they, it's surprising that it's either. They don't have a website. Google. They don't have a website. They don't have. 
but much, but thankfully, they... like Google kind of sources information, mm-hmm. you know, from other people, and and then people, somebody has gone there, has filled in their information. Yeah, you know, not that it, it's going to update if it's hours change or anything like that, but you know, true. Um, but it, it's nice to see that at least there are some companies taking that initiative to kind of. We realize you're not here, but you may not realize the importance of it, but you should be here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Missy, what is your awesome thing of the week? So we've got an update on the Amazon HQ yes. to location. And it doesn't look like Pittsburgh's making that list, yes. which is another discussion <laughs> yeah, for another day. Seriously, <laughs> But the article that I found, uh, uh, they're reportedly looking to split the second headquarters between two cities instead mm-hmm. of being one city. Um. This is according to the Wall Street Journal, and they're looking at, you know, each city, it's going to employ 25,000 people. So the infrastructure that they're looking for, for the city to sustain that many employees is, is it needs to have some base in order to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, they are looking into Crystal City, Virginia, Dallas, Texas, and New York City. And they've apparently held advanced discussions in Crystal City that were more detailed than similar talks with under with other candidate locations. So if we follow the breadcrumbs, it looks like that might be one of the viable cities. Yeah, I, I'm glad that we didn't get it mm-hmm. because we were at this point where um, uh, there, there, I, I helped stream at least two discussions over the Amazon uh, situation and um, and and like the problems it was going to maybe cause here and and the uh, uh, you know, transparency in, in the deal making and everything. If it came here, it would have been nothing but an issue for like, I'm kind of glad it's going away. For yeah. Us. And that's the same thing. I mean, I was literally having this conversation with Brian Crawford from the river's edge yesterday. And it's one of those, there were some benefits to it coming here, but the benefits didn't really outweigh the, the potential negative with it. Um, Pittsburgh is a great city, but could it, feasibly handle that infrastructure Mm -hmm. and some of the some of the politics and things that are are involved with it it just it didn't make sense it sounded like it was going to be another another thing that they built right next to a poor neighborhood that wouldn't benefit from the thing they're building you know which we're apparently really good at here plus what sort of rebates and different things like that are, are right. these cities giving? How much are we giving away? Like, what, what, what are we giving away in order to <laughs> like, get that? Look at game? how look at what happened with Uber <laughs> here yeah. in exactly. this town, right? Like they were given every concession, did not give back what they were um, promising, and and now they're kind of in the doghouse with the city. And I see a lot more Lyft lights at night now. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, here's here's one fun thing though that I, I do want to touch upon with this article. They revisited some of the wild things that some of the ci- some of the cities tried to do to to garner the favor. <laughs> so the Kansas City Mayor Sly James wrote 1,000 reviews of Amazon products. Tucson, Arizona tried to deliver a 21 foot cactus to Amazon's HQ in Seattle, and one town in Georgia offered to rename itself Amazon. Those are what some of those cities have done in order to try to woo Amazon. Well, to- Topeka, Kansas, when they were doing the fiber thing with Google, um, t- Topeka called themselves google for a day or something something weird like yeah that, uh... oh geez oh guys uh well okay I, so there's an east coast so we got two east coast possibilities here happening so uh we'll, we'll see what happens with that i wonder if they'll build uh crazy stuff like they do in seattle like those uh have you seen like the dome thing like the biodome thing they built that's like it's like a park that you can walk in but it's in a giant enclosure like under the dome yeah like under the dome exactly <laughs> it's like multi-leveled and stuff but yet not apparently open to the public uh that they built like right in downtown seattle but i don't know interesting i uh, yes i'm not um oh i'm getting text messages to vote for things uh-huh mm-hmm. um but no i i yeah I, i'm kind of the more i hear about how they interact with seattle um the more i kind of don't want them in my city yeah <laughs> so um now- I, I do want to touch upon the fact that you just got a text message about voting. Yes. I've gotten a few text messages. Friends of mine have seen text messages. And it's not necessarily a go vote for this party or this other party. It's just a straight up go vote. Yes. Yeah. Which is oh. really interesting because they're trying to get in, they're, they're trying to engage people to vote mm-hmm. in all sorts of different means. I mean, obviously you've got the television ads, you've got the signs, you've got the Facebook 
stuff. And ideally, you're signed up as one party or the other, so that you're probably getting a message from whatever that party is. Well, not necessarily, uh, because I'm getting messages from the party that I'm not affiliated with. Mm, libertarians. Sure, we'll go with that. Yeah, okay, one. okay. <laughs> but it's it's just kind of interesting that. I love to see the interaction and I'm curious to see if that's is going to make any sort of impact on voter turnout for a midterm election. Well, we'll find out in a few hours. <laughs> bum, bum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can find out with us uh, at uh, Pittsburgh current uh, here Tuesday night. If you're catching this on our, on our premiere here this evening. Um, so uh, they'll be over on that page and we'll be doing a lot of uh, spots coming up there. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, I'll be sharing them and stuff throughout the night. I'm sure. So, uh, we'll get into some, we have so many things that, man, I was kind of slacking because I didn't know if we were doing a regular show, but man, the, all of you guys in the Facebook group really stepped up this week. Uh, but Wait, first I'm stepping into producer role. Yes. Are you doing an ad? I am about to do the ad trans- for the thing that you just talked about. The, which thing? I did didn't it? change. I didn't swap out the ads. No, you didn't swap out the ads. So the do the ad book? for the thing that you're talking about. The comic book thing? No, the other thing. Which other thing? Hold on. I our friends, my our friends down the, the block. Our friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Those those aren't the ones that they come later. Uh, our friends at the Pittsburgh Current. Our friend, do we have an ad for Pittsburgh Current? Oh, you're going to create one right now. All right. Hey, go check out our friends at the Pittsburgh Current. <laughs> so professional. Uh, new issue just released today, issue eight, I believe. And of course, they were doing Facebook Live podcasts here um, on their page uh, where we talked about things. We had uh, Chelsea Wagner, the uh, county controller for Allegheny County, mm-hmm. talking about the uh, the children's uh, referendum. Um, so, uh, hey, get that in if you if we are, or if you already voted and be like, what did I just vote for? Uh, <laughs> you can follow up on that, too, and uh, be angry or not with that. Go check them out. PittsburghCurrent.com. A lot of great stuff happening like this live stream and everything that we're doing for Election Day. Uh, check them out. PittsburghCurrent.com. A lot of fun stuff happening there. Um, so, like I said, we had a lot submitted. Brandon, a lot of video game stuff this week submitted too. Uh, there's a lot happening. So this was this was one interesting one because man, it's been a while since we've talked about Fortnite. I mean, come on. Uh, so, and and we've already seen Fortnite do stuff with like the Avengers, where like Thanos like invaded <laughs> Fortnite for a few days and stuff like that. But uh, apparently, they just made a deal with the NFL, and uh, Epic Games is going to bring. Uh, NFL uniforms the Fortnite. That's a pretty big deal right there. Um, so, I mean, th- they're already making money hand over fist for like the internal stuff that they've been making, um, or even the stuff that's been kind of on the slide, like somebody that, you know, a character that looks like John Wick. That I don't know if uh, John Wick got paid for yeah. for that necessarily because it was kind of I, I don't know about that, but it, it's still that kind of growing of Fortnite, and and I think it's. I feel like Fortnite is going to be the next World of Warcraft. Like, World of, War- World of Warcraft never went away. Mm-mm. And it's been around for, like, 10 plus years. It was on somebody's laptop that I was trying to help them open Internet Explorer the other day. Um, <laughs> put that together. <laughs> <laughs> so, and she said, yes, I have. I'm like, World of Warcraft? She's like, yes, don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> no, you were judging because of the, the web browser. Well, no, the Chrome went open, but I saw Edge and I saw Internet Explorer. So I'm like, I wonder. And I, I, I poked on Internet Explorer. And hey, Google Drive still works in there, apparently. Anyways, uh, no, so that's that's kind of a big thing with uh, Fortnite, uh, too. Uh, what, what brands do you guys want to see in Fortnite? What brands? Taco Bell. Taco Bell? Yes, I want to see Taco Bell everywhere. I want to be able. To <laughs> I want to dress up as a giant taco. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. What about you, Missy? <laughs> I'm. You, you, go ahead and answer your sorg because there are so many ideas bouncing through my head right now. I can't even pick one. <laughs> they have Thanos in there. I, I can't think of anything better than Thanos invading the thing. Literally, bigger. and you're becoming Thanos. I'm gonna. I'm gonna steal another Katie. Hey. Hello Kitty. Uh, or Pusheen. Yeah, I'm surprised Pusheen. you didn't say that one. Yeah. I'm sorry. Or Pusheen. Or Pusheen. Uh, I, I think All Hello cats. Kitty would would fit a little bit easier. Yeah, true. Yeah. I, I think that that's that would be fun. Yeah. yeah. Sorg. Baymax. Um, Baymax. Oh, oh. oh we got Disney in there on this. Oh, cute. That'd be great if it was like Baymax and, and stuff like that. I or even just going more full uh Marvel with them. Like, can we just drop in, like, Spider-Man and stuff in there? So, 
Spider-Man that really? What? Not like Iron Man you went Spider-Man? Give me Wolverine. I want Wolverine, but you know, we got this brand split thing going on, so <laughs> there's that too. Um also from Brandon, it appears that a Nintendo Switch will be getting YouTube support next week. This is so weird. I I, I guess I guess it's a little bit of I don't know. Nintendo's always been weird with their app support. You know, hey, we're like a year or so in the Switch. And hey, hey, guys, you get YouTube. Yay. Okay. So. It's not a tablet. It's a video game console, right? Yeah. So why are we bringing it? I mean, it already has Hulu and Netflix on it and stuff like that. And so did like the Wii U. So I don't know. I guess it, And again, we all have phones. So why do we need that on this device? Right. So I don't know. So that, that's another part of it. Uh, I'm sure Brandon's excited because I believe he has a switch over there. Uh, we had one from... Let me double check who this is from. Um, we had one from Riz. Riz plays games. Go check out his Twitch channel. Super Mario Odyssey is already playable on an emulator. So usually it takes a good while for emulators to kind of catch up and mm-hmm. hey the 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 Wii's on an emulator right you know several years uh, it's not often that we get emulation while a console's in current cycle right so this is well this this is where it kind of turns into like hey maybe we shouldn't have like this this feels illegal <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and they're selling this actively, right? Yeah, you know, it's one thing when you're like, hey, I want to play my Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle, um, but I can't get a Game Boy that works, you know, yeah. but I still want to like preserve the ability to play it. You know, that makes a lot of sense. But um, to be able to just, by the way, can somebody can somebody point me out a decent Sega CD emulator? Because I got a lot of discs I, I'd love to play that I don't have a working Sega CD and it's hard to get one that works. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know what that, well, I guess... Those aren't, aren't those aren't DVDs, are they? Or Blu-rays or anything? Like that's like you had somebody had to extract a file off of their specialized SD card for the cartridges, right? And do that. So that that took a lot of work. So yeah, it was, there's still kind of a barrier of entry there, until you can download <laughs> Mario Odyssey off of any uh, BitTorrent, I guess. But um, I, but I guess that's inevitable. Um. And there, there's usual graphical glitches and um, slowdown and other other things, but it looks really smooth from the video that they're showing here for the most part. And oh, there's some load time apparently. It just went to black. <laughs> um, but no, it looks like it's pretty smooth. I don't know what kind of computer they're running this thing on. Probably pretty high end to be doing the emulation. But um, I love that they're like playing it in the window. Just be safe. Oh, we got Larry making faces at us in the in the window. <laughs> so by the way, next door is a polling place. So it's been kind of interesting to see like the traffic going by the window as we record this at 11 a.m. You know what our favorite though was the gentleman with the Hooters cup. Yeah, the yes. gentleman with the Hooters cup just mm-hmm. just sporting it, man. Strolling on by. Yeah. So I figured out what happened with the show, why we're doing it at this point in time. Mm. The daylight savings time switch. Oh. We just got really really confused. <laughs> there was a meeting last night and somebody was like, "Oh, I thought the meeting was tomorrow." And we're like, yeah, daylight savings time. Apparently, he lost a day. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, we have some more. Um, Brandon also wanted to share with us. Uh, oh, oh, I saw this. The Pokeball uh, Pokeball waffle maker. Waffle maker. Mm. <laughs> this this almost made it into your Amazon cart. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. Because I like waffles, yeah, and who doesn't like waffles. I like Pokemon. So why not combine the two and have pokeball waffles now if you're a star wars fan that looks kind of like a death star that's no waffle <laughs> that is no waffle that is no pokeball um yeah no it's it's kind it of does look like a death star see so anyway, i want to see if there's like a there's a death star waffle maker somewhere that's just basically the same thing rebranded they, they just move this the uh circle from the center to it kind of does the well, it just looks like you're in the wrong end of the death star for the most part so yeah it's not the cuddly end no it's not the cuddly end of the death star <laughs> Jeez. um here's another one that chris um sent us uh you know he's always looking at these weird uh you know these alternative games that are popping up and uh this is one thanks to uh london theater.org so we got we're gonna have to get a we're gonna have to get our passports ready to go go check this one out but it is a high adrenaline theatrical show 
Uh, it's called Variant 31, a world premiere in the West End over in, I, I presume, in London. Uh, it's an uh, immersive zombie experience. Katie, you know a little bit about immersive zombie experiences. Zombies, yes. Uh, they say it's a theatrical show. You'll uh, see players wear custom-built technology made for the game that mm. will track every move a player makes. Um, once wearing the technology, compa- uh, competitors will be able to control every part of their time uh, inside their new world. Uh, and they can unlock hidden parts and fight for their freedom. Uh, to win the game, participants must solve puzzles, work in teams, and decide their fates as they work uh, to beat the game. Um, the in, in, Inside this arena kind of set up, and they're calling this a theatrical thing more than like a game or haunted house kind of thing, mm-hmm. right? Um, but this is going to be uh, over 100 professional actors trained in aerial, acro- aerial acrobatics, parkour, stage combat, and fire poi? So, this is pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> so, not only is it like, oh, there's going to be a zombie coming. They're going to parkour at you. Like, offensive parkour, I imagine. Yeah. Jeez. Wow. So, you can go check that out. Um, and it is as over at londontheater.co.uk. Look for Variant 31 uh, for more information. So, Ooh, it's at an unknown central look. London location. Oh, maybe they put a bag over your head and take you to Ooh. it. Like that's part of the experience, right? Yeah. Like you guys have like buses that bring people over that creep me out from my childhood. Yeah. And that <laughs> it's a scare house, and then they just they just take you. Same concept, but with hoods. Maybe if you put a hood over everybody's head going to scare house. Ooh, oh, bus. where is this mysterious Etna PA? Yeah, Etna. <laughs> new ideas for the next season all right guys i want to give a shout out we don't have it today it's a little early for pizza but uh our friends have been supporting pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza at slice on broadway right up the way i hope if you're out voting you're, you're stopping by and getting some some lunch here in the beachview neighborhood or wherever you may be in four locations across uh, pittsburgh pnc park carnegie pa and the west end uh go 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 check our friends at Slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway.com. PJH underscore Slice on the tweeters. Um, I didn't have very much. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's okay. Katie's got a story for us. I'm always here for uh-huh. you. Uh-huh. Always here. Uh, again, more video game stuff. This is just the week for it. And, and I don't know what is the tone of the week or whatever. But um, um, I guess everybody was just kind of, hey, Apple News, we're done. And we're going to go trick-or-treating. No, I think, I think the biggest thing is it's the elections yeah so let's escape to video games where life isn't as crazy as it currently is we should go look for the most because like we, i was watching john oliver and they're talking about how hey it's time for everybody to get their holograms out no it was actually uh daily show was doing it um because you know we got our this is our demonstration of how many house seats and and, and it's all like 3d and stuff um what was it will i am it was hologrammed in one time for the elections is that the one sure Sure. Um, so we could like we should find like the one that was not weird for our awesome thing next week. Um, but I, our friends are looking for group. We talked about several weeks ago these mini Street Fighter cabinets that Walmart was selling, where they'd have like Street Fighter and a bunch of other kind of classic games, but they they also have like probably like five other games on them as well. Well, looking for group got one. And it's kind of interesting to see if you guys are with us on uh, video. Um, it's it's loading right now. Um, they they posted on Instagram. There's some gameplay footage on the Instagram as well. But I mean, it's super street fighter. You kind of know what you're getting into. Um, and for scale, uh, there's somebody kneeling at the. I love also for scale. It's right by a, a stack of folding chairs, so you know exactly how that stacks up too. Now I remember there was there was supposedly like you could put this on a table probably, and I think there was like kind of a riser you could buy as well. To make it kind of more standard level, um, but you know, it was a it was a pretty cool little uh, product that was going around. I kind of wish we had one for the studio too. So kind of looks like uh, digital battleship. Yeah. What? It kind of looks like digital battleship the way that it's set up. Like how it's like like kind of propped up or something. No, the the way it, it looks like the console is going to fold down on itself, and it's kind of like the the digital battleship hmm. thing, and. That'd be great if it just like folded up into a suitcase. Because let's be honest, like yeah, it's not like the actual Street Fighter cabinet where it was just a bunch of giant circuit boards in there and a, and a tube TV. Like we've we've really kind of it's it's like a Raspberry Pi probably and an LCD screen, yeah. and that's it at yeah. this point. Like people are making these things, right? 
Uh, so, uh, so we're going to, another reason to stop by our friends at looking for group and, uh, check out what they have going on there. Um, one last video game one that I found before everybody else's barrage of video game news. And then uh, mm-hmm. Katie's got something that's not about video games Woo-hoo, that me. we'll get into. Uh, but nope, that's the wrong one. There was a, a fan game of sorts named, uh, called Mario flashback that looked really impressive. Um, this was kind of an homage to all the Mario games of the past and, and with like kind of just some demonstrations of pixel art and, and things like that. Um, say super Mario flashback. And I believe you can grab it. I forget if it was available on emulator or just has its own kind of download thing, but as usual, Nintendo is not great about, um, f- fan service <laughs> a little bit. Um, and I think there was some takedown issues, um, with it, but, um, here's a little bit of the visuals for you. I love that they have this little animation at the top of the page on Engadget. Um, but again, it, it, it doesn't look, it, it looks like none of the Mario games yet. It looks like all of the Mario <laughs> games a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, like Mario's got a kind of interesting look to him. Um, they, they got, got some, some cool, um, you know, depth to the background and everything. Um, but no, some really good, it was being presented at the, uh, Sonic amateur games expo, uh, for the latest demo. I, and, uh, <laughs> has a little bit of everything and I don't think this is available, uh, and they said that it's kind of an homage to, you know, how you have, a, like, Sonic Generations and Sonic Mania that kind of threw back to these kinds of things. Um, and I'm trying to... F- oh, yeah, I'm trying to find... I know I read this before, but, like, how you could, like, get your hands on it. But there's some video out there. A lot of gifts that uh, um, Engadget had as well. This is actually a, a Turkish programmer <laughs> that has been... Uh, um, that had been coding for several years and and i think this is part of you know because we've seen a lot of i've seen like a lot of cartridges and things that things like three play effects where um where uh you know people have take taken like like super mario world and redone all the levels you know to make it a little harder so uh this is part of that kind of development community so go check it out look up uh super mario flashback and you can grab that too katie what do you got here, here yeah. this week so uh I, the number one, this article is hilarious because it comes from Nasdaq.com. Um, oh, <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> totally worth it. Uh, Naughty America is bringing augmented reality porn to uh, Android phones. It was one of the first uh, XXX rated augmented reality. Uh, life-size 3D versions of adult entertainers in your living room. And they're only it's only on the website, through their website, because, you know, Google doesn't care for this kind of stuff in their stores. Uh, it uses Google's AR, AR core technology, which I love in this article. It's a technology that's been used in the past to bring users superimpose Star Wars characters, Pokemon, and full-blown games over their mobile devices camera view. <laughs> that's the example. So it's the same technology that brought you Pokemon can now bring you a male or female buddy um, that is uh, not safe for work. Uh, there are different versions. A free version has them in clothes. Um, paying versions, you get n- naked, um, which is pretty hilarious. Um, and then like some of these are kind of interesting because later on they discuss that, um, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. you can make your own, uh, well, this is, there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening in this article. Um, there's custom made ones that you can superimpose own faces onto the bodies of porn stars. And then also this could lead to the future of creating your own AR porn videos and, um, having photos with Hollywood stars it's just we, it's just crazy like they're like this is the future this is where we're going and yeah i was seeing discussion in this article yeah. about like deep fakes and everything like yeah. that too so um i'm gonna close this website because there's children going by the window <laughs> it's <laughs> so. fine there's no there was worse articles there this yes. was a clean i clicked one of the links oh yeah then that's your own fault. I was but yeah, curious. <laughs> my nasdaq article was perfectly safe for everyone <laughs> yes but yeah so now you can get your little ar fix ar porn fix on android Interesting. There you go. Everybody. It was inevitable, wasn't yep, it? Yeah. It's not just about throwing balls at Pokemon. It's also about well, well other things involving balls. 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 Yes. <laughs> balls. Oh, technology. Uh, <laughs> this, I think it's my favorite part of the article. Those that brought you Pokemon can now. The technology that brought you Pokemon can now. It is the future. Well, I might have to dust off an Android device and I mean, get See the free stuff works. with the people yeah, in the Yeah, it's the close around. stuff. It's, it's PC. Yeah. You know. And they say some dirty is, things to you. Is this what happens when your li- wife leave te- leaves town? Yes, I experiment with technology, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's all we're saying. That's uh, all you need to know. That's all you need to know. 
All right. Uh, hey, I want to give a shout out to our friend Alex Cars out there on the West Coast. Alex Cars Design and Media. Go check him out at alexcars.media and alexandercars.com. Uh, he's your he's your partner in the in digital creation. He's helped us with DVDs, uh, covers, uh, T-shirts, so website design, and so much more. Uh, I know a lot of guys are here in the Pittsburgh area, but uh, we we work remotely with them pretty pretty well, and uh, he's he's got a lot of great work out there. So go check him out, Alex Cars dot media k-a-h-r-s alex cars dot media um so we have coming up um of course if you guys are checking us here live or in the premiere at 7 p.m um or if you want to check out what we did uh pittsburgh current uh, was doing again like i said a live uh, we're going to do a lot of live videos throughout the evening um live from the local bar uh down in uh the south side so I, I was just trying to remember where local was down there. <laughs> so, and I think I just remembered. I was like, oh, that place. Uh, so go check that out there. And it's also part of the incline is going to be part of that too. Uh, and I'll be behind the scenes um, trying to get the streamings. I'll be, I'll be turning the cranks on the streamers uh, and getting that alive and out there too. And please check out Thursday morning at 10 a.m. is when Pittsburgh Current Live podcast is as well. Our friends at Comic Book Pit were just in here. New episodes are coming out for that very, very soon. Um, you can check out the live feeds over on their page. And other than that, was there any other events this week for our awesome cast friends would be interested in? I don't think events this week, but, uh, I know last week we mentioned about the Tolan FX Romero lives. Oh event. boy. Oh boy. We have some really fun video from yes. that evening. That's so. over on the Beachview Revitalization Advisory Group page. You're going to remember that. Uh, brag on the Twitter and on the Facebook page. Uh, or just for look that. at the stuff that Sorg has shared on his Facebook. Yes, I've shared it as well. Uh, so you can check out some of the video. We had a nice little parade go through. And the girl who stopped, she was in a wagon that was made up to look like a television. Mm-hmm. And she crawled out of it like the character from The Ring. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she crawled like right over to my camera. And it was creepy. Super, super creepy, but super, super awesome as well. So I know Sword clipped out that video, and that's in there too. Um, but yeah, it was it was a fun night had by all. Uh, we had some wrestling. We had obviously some. Yeah, we had we had uh, only flesh uh, that was performing uh, a band performing while girls and the singer hung from hooks. Mm-hmm. That was fun. <laughs> so and Doug Bradley. Doug Bradley was here. Uh, Hellraiser himself was singing, was, was reading from his uh, Spine Chiller th- uh, series, some uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Yep, he was he was reading Edgar Allan Poe to the children. It was amazing. Uh, it was it was great. <laughs> it was good. It was a fun. It was kind of fun to see like this like you know weird and wacky world that I usually go to the gathering for happen a block from us. Yes. Uh, it, it was it was great. It was a good Halloween thing. So I, I've been I've been loving hearing the community reactions to the people hanging from hooks. I had somebody from the city in here yesterday. <laughs> yes. We were talking about it. They're like, "Oh yeah, it was looked, it was very interesting." But then I like looked in a room and there was like people hanging from hooks by their skin. And I was just like, "Yeah, no, that's a thing." You know, it was Halloween. You know, I don't think it's going to happen every week up here, well, but it does somewhere in the city. It was kind of funny because one of our friends, um, she wanted her husband to go to go see it because he's not into like weird stuff at all. Yeah. And she was just kind of nonchalantly like, oh, I wonder what's in here. But it was funny because they had passed one of the one of the artists for that. And she had the hooks already like in her legs. Yeah. And she knew what that meant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she was just kind of steering him in that general direction because she saw this, this girl walk past. And it was hilarious because I guess his reaction was was pretty uh, comical. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, such good stuff. Uh, no, that's good. I, I love that Tolan FX is doing this up the, up the hill. And it sounds like it's going to be even bigger next year from what they want to do. Mm-hmm. So, also, giant George Romero head. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, we're pondering the George Romero head. Jo- uh, yeah. And there were cast members from like Night of the Living Dead there, too. They were hanging out. I got, sh- I got shooed out of the way so they could take a picture with George. Yeah. All right, Katie, what's going on with you? It's the off season. Oh, oh, I don't know, stuff and things. There's a lot of video. There's a lot of video up. Yeah, a lot of videos. Check out all the videos. Yeah, stuff happens. There's stuff that happens in the off season. People should subscribe to the email list. That's what I tell people. Email list, the podcast, the Facebook page. All the things, and then you hear about what's coming up next. That's right. Dun, dun. Missy's at the best fly on the Twitter. Producer Missy. 
yes, uh, producer Missy. Um, Probably be tweeting for producing. my California tip, trip. Yes, uh, producer Missy, who rarely ever posts to her own Twitter, actually posted to her own Twitter this morning. <sighs> It was it was breakfast, yay! And it was glorious, and it was delicious, and it was amazing. It was a chocolate lava cake with ice cream. Ah, uh, the proper use of Twitter. Absolutely. Forget politics. Are you tweeting your lunch? No, no, you're not using it right. No, I was tweeting my breakfast, and yeah, it was amazing. Close enough. Awesome. And check out everything SorgatronMedia.com. All the great podcasts, including this, and so much more. Thank you to I saw Doug and Steve from. Uh, Bold Sports Pittsburgh and uh, uh, dropping in there through the day. Um, Doug, 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 Doug is the awesome thing of the week. He drove he drove around Dallas yesterday. Their roads are more awful than Pittsburgh pothole season. Ooh. No, Ooh. he was he was down. He was checking a bunch of barbecue joints and stuff down I there. I saw so him in line. Essentially, he was in his little slice of heaven. I'm gonna get some tips for when I go down to Fort Worth here in uh, a few months. Yes. So. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.